Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to introduce you to HTML5. HTML is the hypertext markup language of the web. Whenever you open up any website, any content that you see within that website is HTML5. The styling for that website, like the colors, the alignment, all the cool effects that is partly css now the colors and the styling that is css the effects they could come from css or from javascript so so that's how these effects actually work i'm not going to dive into javascript in this course because that is irrelevant to python uh, to this course that i'm creating it is not irrelevant but we don't actually need it for our upcoming projects the reason that we are diving from the python backend which was like python plus databases and all that good stuff to front end is because you will be creating uh, projects you will be creating full stack websites and uh, as a prerequisite, you should have knowledge of HTML5 and CSS3 because those two are the building blocks of any website. HTML5 is the content, CSS3 is the styling for any website. So in this series of three sections, we are going to go over HTML5. In the next series of three sections, we are going to go over CSS3. And so this is your second course within the Python course. So the first one was the first one was uh, the SQL or Structured Query Language Essentials course. This is the uh, HTML5 Essentials course. Next up, you're going to have CSS3 essentials course the html5 the 5 in the html is the version the 3 in css is the version so the actual name of the technology is html hypertext markup language basically says that it represents the content of any website so how can you uh, actually find out uh, where the html lies for any website is you can go ahead and right click and go to inspect and open up chrome developer tools that is the official name the actual name or you can just do Control shift and i and it is going to open up chrome developer tools now if this is your first interaction with the chrome developer tools uh, this is this might become might be like a little bit overwhelming but it isn't uh, we have elements which is just reserved for html this the left part that you can see here this is html the right part with it with it, which i just uh, shortened it uh, this is the css then you have console you have network you have performance sources application memory security and lighthouse which we are not going to dive into we're just going to dive into the html part of this so it's html is a markup language python is a programming language so the only thing they have in common is that word language so whenever you're talking about language like python a programming language sql SQL structured query language, CSS3, uh, CSS cascading style sheets, all these languages, the only thing that they have in common is that they have a, a, a sort of um, authorized or like authentic um, uh, specification. That specification requires an environment that you write it that specification is implemented through writing codes through li writing lines of codes and that those lines of code that require a specific environment so for python we talked about vs code vs code doesn't uh, doesn't only support python it supports most of the programming languages then we had sql for sql we had mysql we also work with SQL in, uh, through our Python applications in SQL Shell and all that good stuff. We have been talking about all of that. So the same thing goes for HTML. HTML is a language, is a markup language. It is not a programming language. But it does have some specification, some standards. It is like one million times easier than Python. You can get up and running with HTML like in 30 minutes. That's how easy HTML, HTML is. CSS is like maybe like, like a little bit difficult, but still you could say like um, 999,000 times easier than Python. 
they are both very easy especially so that we have especially uh, taken into consideration what we have been studying so far you're going to get the gist of html5 and cs3 very quickly and you will be able to create static websites very quickly now so coming uh, just circling back to what what i was talking about html it has code it has some specification some standards and we do require an environment to work with those standards now these standards they create what's called the content of the web what is the content of the web so this text that you can see here that is the content this text is the content this text is the content this link so whenever you hover on it you can see that the pointer changes to a hand icon that is the content this input field it is the content and um, so you can see everything that you can see is the content but the colors and the styling that is not part of the content that is part of the css so uh let's go ahead and let's actually dive into html more so on the left side you're going to see that this is the html of this website so uh html has an html document so whenever we're talking about html we're talking about html documents that's why you can see i'm going to zoom really in here so just so you can see really well what is actually happening so we have an, a doc type which says it, it is an html document then the html document has elements now in python we had logic we had functions we had loops we have we had conditionals we had data structures a lot of cool stuff the reason that programming languages are tend to be a little bit more intimidating is because there is a lot of moving parts but that does not apply to HTML. HTML has only one thing, and that is element. So HTML has elements. CSS has properties. Everything is contained within these two concepts, within these two ideas. So this thing that you can see, this less than sign and this greater than sign here, and the end of it is right here. This HTML starts, so we have this HTML that I've just clicked on, and this HTML, both of these constitute one element. So the first part of this element, this is called the uh, opening tag. The end, the, the one which has a forward slash, this way you can understand better. The part of the HTML element that has a forward slash, it is called a, a closing tag. So an HTML element has two tags. One is opening, which is the start of one. Then you have some content within the, that specific element. Then you have the closing tag. Some elements do not have any closing tag. That's why they're called self-closing tags. We are going to talk about them as well. So uh, now you can see whenever I hover on these, I'm not clicking hovering basically means that you mouse over them and uh, you do not click you basically just go over them like it's hovering on on the surface of something but it is not actually touching it so you're not actually clicking by touching I mean like clicking so so this is some text and we know this text is an HTML5 element right so it is content how 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 can we know that this is content and how can we find it within this code that we have so before actually showing you where that comes from all the code for html for any specific website is contained in this part in the left side all the css styling for a website is contained on the on the right part i'm not going to focus on css i'm just going to focus on html because css have um, dedicated separate chapters we are here just to understand how html works that's why i've slowed down the pace as well so you can really get it um, i'm assuming that you have no idea what html is that's the way that i'm explaining it so you can see that there is something that you are going to see in every html document that constitutes an html website so whenever you want to create an, a website through HTML and HTML and CSS, you're going to write HTML elements. Those HTML elements will be converted to content that you can see on the website. Who does this conversion? That is the job of the browser. So you don't need to worry about it. Again, 
if you want to create any website you have to write HTML elements the HTML elements will be translated into content that anyone can see and interact with on any website it doesn't matter what that website is it is the markup language so it is the official standard for any website's content so there are other tools that create websites but at the end of the day those tools they create html elements and those html elements create websites so, so they do not create websites they just write they just automate this process of writing html elements and then the browser basically converts those those html elements into websites you're going to know all of those throughout these chapters so if there is anything confusing don't worry about it now uh, within any html element uh, with sorry within any html document you're going to see three things that that is uniform that is consistent across the board there is no exception the first one is you're going to see this html element so whatever word comes within the opening tag the first word that comes within the opening tag uh, specifies the name of that element so where is the opening tag this is the opening tag what is the first name the first name is html so this is the html element remember we have an html document within the document we have a big parent which is called html element within that parent we have two children one is head element the other one is the body element you can see we have this is the starting tag or the opening tag the ending tag has a forward slash in it so this is the opening tag the elements that do not have this ending tag they're called self-closing it means we do not need to provide them with that an image element is an is an example of a self-closing tag so html element head element body element these three elements they are consistent across the board doesn't matter what the website is you need to provide these uh to create a website so uh we are going to jump into cs uh, html more in our upcoming chapter as well where i show you how you can create a simple html website for now i just want to show you some content so if you come here it says select an element in the page to inspect it just go ahead and click on it on this icon and then you can go on any element on in this website for example you can click on this and on, right now i'm going to zoom out so we can see our our stuff better now you can see that how this is html element so it says unlimited movies tv shows and more what does this say unlimited tv movies tv shows and more so you can see that this title for this website it comes from this element what is the name of this element again remember an element has a closing tag and an opening tag and a closing tag the first word that comes in the opening tag specifies the name of that element so by this convention this is the opening tag what is the first word h1 so h1 is the name of this element h stands for heading so we have headings that we use to create uh we have h1 elements that we use to create headings so you can see that the browser got this h1 and the content inside of it anything that is between the opening tag and the closing tag it is called the content that the website is actually the browser is actually going to show in the form of the website and it grabbed that and provided it right here we can change that as well so for example i say not so much right so if you can change the content of any website as well and you can see that we have basically changed the content of uh, netflix but it, it is not going to stick why because we know the back end we know that this title was stored in a database whenever you refresh this this is going to make an http request to that through an api endpoint to that database where this title is stored and we know that you cannot change the database from the front end otherwise how chaotic would be the internet um, then the database is just whenever you reload the database is just going to sh send you the actual content again we know the back end part of it right we know that all these data they're stored somewhere 
right? They're not stored on thin air. Then whenever you reload, all the data is going to come back and all your changes will be gone because you cannot actually change any website. Otherwise, you would have been able to change Netflix, Facebook or whatever. Then all of that will, will have been broken down and nothing would have worked on the Internet. That's why the back end is not visible to you as the front end dev or the front end user. So I think this is enough introduction to HTML. Without further ado, we should dive into writing HTML. These are all HTML elements. You're going to know uh, most of these, like 90, 95% of them HTML is very simple. I'm going to show you how you can get started with HTML. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to close this uh, developer tools. I'm going to close this one as well. So I'm just going to refresh a little. And uh, we have this chapter, HTML5 Essentials course, beginner level. So you have beginner level, you have intermediate level and advanced level. Whenever you right click on this folder and you say open with code, it is going to open that with code for you as well. So we are going to work uh, with VS Code. Uh, when writing HTML code, CSS code, because VS Code is like uh, the king of the editors. You can use it for any, for almost any technology that you want. And HTML is uh, HTML and CSS, they're not a, no exception. I could have provided you with another editor. Uh, if you're using another editor, that is okay, but my recommendation is VS Code. The reason for that is you are learning a new technology and I do not want to overcomplicate it right from the start. So I want you to be familiar with the environment that we are using. Just like I want you to be new to this uh, writing HTML code. If you're not, then that is okay. But I'm assuming you're new. This is the first time that you're uh, actually learning HTML5. That's why there's going to be a lot of details to this essentials course. Uh, just before, just a note before wrapping this lecture up, I do have two courses on HTML5. One is uh, the HTML5 CC3 Bootcamp. The other one is the Flexbox Great SaaS and Animations Developer course. So after you're done with these courses, these essentials courses, if you think that front-end web development is something that you like, you like creating websites, then I suggest, I do recommend that you check out those courses. The Flexbox Great SaaS and Animations Developer course is actually a bestseller course. It has a lot of students and it has a lot of demand as well. So you're gonna be in good hands and in, in a good community of students. And there are a lot of questions that you can refer to, a lot, any question that you want, you can ask in there as well. So see you in the next one.